Hi everybody, welcome to this fantastic episode of Kelly's Quest. Today I am in Madison, Wisconsin, and we are about to compete in the USW DGC Disc Golf Championships. There are so many women coming to this tournament, over 300 of us total, and one of the beautiful things that makes my heart truly smile is there's quite a few trans women that are coming to this tournament, and I am very fortunate enough to have three of them here today. I have Chloe Alice, I have Natalie Ryan, and I have Kylie Rotolo. And of course, I'm Kelly Jenkins, and we all four are competing in the U.S. Women's Championships. And of course, you saw my lovely dog Titus come in, and he made his appearance, and now he is out in the shade. But today, what we're going to talk about is what is their experience like being trans athletes, and what it's like to be competitive and be a representative of a community. So first of all, the three of you, thank you so, so much for doing this. And it does my heart a lot of good because I'll be honest, when I joined the PDGA in 2014 as, the, as an open trans woman, I was terrified. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I didn't even understand the hurdles that I had to go through to even become a PDGA member in the women's division as a trans woman. And the level of proof that I met these criteria became kind of burdensome. And I give the PDGA credit because they were experimenting on how to do this with me being the first trans woman to openly trans woman to be in the PDGA. They were experimenting on how do we make this go well for the community because I in my heart, I think the PDGA has the opportunity to set an example for other sports on how to incorporate diverse humans. And I think the PDGA is trying to do that. And by them welcoming me into the community in 2014 and then understanding that, ooh, that's a really high bar of acceptance that we have placed on trans women to compete in this community. Let's reevaluate. Let's see what the science is saying. Let's see what the International Olympic Committee is doing. And let's figure out how we can make this more accessible to more people. And they did that. They got some, the requirements for me to join the PDGA as a woman were different than what they are now. There's still a level of proof and burden that other athletes don't have placed on them. But I also think that we are fortunate to be in a sport that we get to do this, where there's four of us here competing. And I really want to thank you all so much for it. And Kylie, I want to start with you because you are native to the state of Wisconsin. And you said you might be living in Illinois now, I think right. you said. So how long have you been playing in the sport of disc golf? How long have you been playing as your authentic self? Yeah, I grew up in Appleton, Wisconsin. Um, started playing in high school because we had a course on our high school grounds. Um, and there's a bunch of other courses in the area. Um, joined the Air Force and stopped playing for a little while. And then I ended up transitioning and moving from Pennsylvania to Illinois <clears throat> and started picking it up again because my dad and brother were playing and I kind of just got back into it that way. Um, and that's probably 2017 is when I started playing um, casually um, as myself. Uh, 20, December 2020 was when I started playing in the PDGA, my first tournament. Yep, yep. It was a Christmas tournament, so. Um, but, and I'm very happy. Yeah, I'm very happy. Just being able to be myself and um, just be relaxed and be able to just go out and enjoy things and not worry about um, somebody that I don't have to be anymore. I am me. And what division are you playing in at the tournament? When you have 300 women showing up to a disc golf tournament, there's going to be a bunch of different skill levels, and the PDGA has it designed where you can compete in your age bracket and your skill level both. So what division are you playing in? Uh, I am playing in uh, intermediate FA1 this weekend. Um, normally I play FA1 for my local tournaments and everything, so not in the open yet. So. I'm glad you mentioned not in the open yet and then look kind of over at Chloe and Natalie. I'm playing in the age protected division of FPO 50 plus. I'm, believe it or not, I am over 50 years old. I know, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. 
So the, we have two pros here with us, and I want to talk with Chloe and Natalie on a different level because part of this sport is just like any sport at an elite level, when you compete, there are tournaments everywhere. And people are good enough to go play in these tournaments and sometimes they make money. And there is a tour that goes all over the country. Right now, the tour is stopped in Wisconsin. Last weekend, you all were in Minnesota at the Preserve. This week, we're here in Wisconsin. Next week, there'll be another tournament or there'll be a break. And Natalie and Chloe, you two are part of that tour and you all are traveling around the country. So you all have a unique set of circumstances that are different from us. Right now in the United States, there are no full legal protections for trans people across the board. It is all driven totally by state rights. So when you drive across the country, some places you have full protections, other places you have zero protections. And right now we're in a state that has no statewide protection for trans people, but I'm also here to tell you I've had zero problems and I've had a wonderful time meeting absolute strangers because that's what I do. I just go up to strangers and I say hi to them and uh, that's how I go about it. How is this year of touring going? Because you've been doing it pretty extensively. And just what is your general feeling for what's happening in our community in the sport of disc golf? Um, the tour has been going good. Um, we've been having a little bit of vehicle problems occasionally, but other than that, it's been going great. Um, it's pretty easy to drive from place to place. They give us enough time for the most part. There's been maybe one or two stops that are kind of stressful just getting to them, just because the drives are 20 hours or more. But um, yeah, other than that, the tour has been going pretty solid. My season's going okay. Um, I've been getting hurt a little too much, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, and if I could stop doing that, it'd be going a lot better. Uh, so I'm currently traveling now with my fiance, um, who proposed to me actually right before the tour started this year. So <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, but it's it's made it a lot easier to tour just because I, I don't have to worry about being alone, you know, in a random place that I've never been before. So it, it, it gives me a little bit of peace of mind generally when I'm on the road. So I also want to now come to you, Chloe, because you did something that made the news. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I'd like for you to just share that story and well, hello. Um, I am Chloe Alice. I don't know if you know that, but you probably might if you're watching this. Um, my rating is currently 926. It's uh, not as cool as Natalie's over there, but uh, it's still it is still my best, um, which is really awesome. I I kind of tracked down for a little bit, but as I've I've uh, been out on tour and started to like play every day, a few rounds every day, I've started to really hone my skills, which is nice. Um, I did do something pretty incredible. Uh, I aced one of the most um, probably top five like best holes in disc golf I would say um, and it did get on the news it was on uh, Sports Center, uh, like snapchat top plays it wasn't like crazy like it wasn't on your like local news site or something like that but it was pretty cool I thought it was cool uh, and honestly it was it was awesome because I, I hit that and I felt like a normal person like a, a, a like cisgendered person that did something amazing and everybody's celebrating like it wasn't anything you know um and i feel all too often we don't get that enough uh i feel like if we do anything really cool it's because we were born the opposite gender and not because we're actually good at, at what we do and that that isn't fun but uh, it's the reality that we live in right now uh you did mention that um we go from state to state and it it is scary at times i th honestly did not think about like the laws of if I'm protected as a human being or if I'm not protected as a I didn't even know here was like we had law I don't even know in Florida if we have like good enough laws to where like I'm protected as a human being uh honestly I haven't experienced really any hate on the road traveling from state to state if anything I've I've seen more hate at like close to my local area and online uh, whereas like face to face, um, nobody's really been 
super aggressive or, or mean or have said anything like smart or anything like that. And um, that's super reassuring. It's been really amazing on tour with all these ladies. There hasn't really been any ladies that have been in my face and, and mean about me competing. And that's nice too. It's been, I've made so many good friends just this is my first year on tour. So being able to meet everybody for the first time and, and develop those friendships is something that I'm like, uh, prioritizing over like playing good. So, uh, and even this weekend, um, I've made some friends during the road and, and that's where I'm like staying. I'm, I'm staying in like Airbnbs with some of my friends. We stayed at a hotel the first night that we got here and, um, it's just been a great time. Like, honestly, I'm having a blast. So, yeah. I think that's one of the things that, yes, I look like I'm only 35, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so I have seen the growth of acceptance for our community over the years. And I really do think that the sport of disc golf embodies the way society views humans for the most part. Like you were saying, online people are a little bit more bold than they would be in person. That's just the way it is in life with social media. When I first started, people did come after me and it was traumatizing at times because you brought up a point that it isn't that we work their tail ends off to get good at this sport. Like Natalie, I'm sure you just sleep and eat bonbons all day long and wake up and just the game is there. No hard work, no practice, no nothing. But that's sarcasm folks, that's not true. Natalie is probably one of the hardest working uh, disc golfers I've met. Like she puts in all the field work, she does all of the stuff to make herself better and people don't want us to succeed. For whatever reason, there's a subset of people that don't want to see us succeed and they will be vocal about it. And I think that it's usually not women disc golfers that are our biggest um, detractors. I think the women disc golfers are like, yeah, you're just a woman, you miss putts like I do, you make putts like I do, you, all of those things happen. And I, for me, to hear these stories of, I just was traveling the country. I didn't even think about that. That's how it should be. And I'm, it makes my heart good, feel good to see that happen. Because I promise you, there are kids out there that will see this video that'll be like, wait, it is okay for me to go play sports. And I'm not better because of some advantage that people are saying. I'm better because I'm good at the sport and I've worked hard at it and I just got I'm good. So Kylie, I want to talk to you a little bit about what it feels like to play. Is this your first U.S. Women's Disc Golf Championships? What is that like for you? I remember I did my first U.S. Women's in 2016. I met some wonderful women my age that were just as good at disc golf as I am and better at, at it in some parts of the game. And that was the most important part for me was to be on a competitive level against women my age that I could possibly beat or they could possibly beat me. So you wanna share what this experience is like so far for you, just showing up and what all it's been like to get ready for it? So yeah, this is my first year uh, doing USDGC. Um, it worked out well that it just happened to be two hours north of where I live. Um, and I know I think last year was in California. Um, so when I saw that it was gonna be in Madison, I was like, I number one, I need to do this. Um, and just preparing for it, I was out here two weeks ago. I played at one of the parks, um, one of the courses I'll be playing. And um, it's just, I just got in today. So it's just already like, it's been wonderful, like meeting, meeting pros, um, meeting other women and stuff that um, I might not, I get to see the same people at my local courses all the time, which is a bad thing. Um, but, you know, broadening like my social network and everything, um, meeting new people and from other states. And um, I just, I look forward to it the next four days of all the new women I'm going to meet on my different cards and stuff. So, um, and next year, I don't know where it's supposed to be next year, but I'm taking this opportunity to play while I can. Chloe? You said something earlier about the community in this, and I'd like for you to kind of talk about what, what do you think about that, I guess? 
Yeah, so uh, this is actually a great um, opportunity for sure. Uh, thank you for inviting us over here. I think in total there's around eight trans women that are competing in the 323 um, you know, women in this event. And uh, this is honestly the most trans women I've been around. So, you know, it's really cool to to get to talk to like minded people and, and just be around people that that, you know, don't make you feel awkward sometimes. And uh, we're currently in this situation. The the majority there is one cis woman that is with us she's back here off camera and uh she gets to feel how we feel all the time you know it's generally like one trans person and then like a whole bunch of like cis normal people and uh so it's it's awesome to 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 be the majority at something at least in in this moment and uh it, it's nice to connect and and hear people's backgrounds and struggles that they've been through and and i think community is a is a great part of uh disc golf in a whole so, um, yeah, for sure. Okay, Natalie, you've been touring longer than anybody here. You have embraced yourself as an ambassador. You have a shirt that is the trans pride emblem that you wear. You have the little patch I've seen. You are, because you can, because of your skill level, you are making it onto the lead cards and onto the camera. What is it like to be this ambassador? And is it something that you were aware that might happen or is it like whoa I'm an ambassador all of a sudden um so I knew from the beginning that I was probably going to be good enough to be the ambassador for the sport you know just I I did I that, that was <laughs> that's the reason I'm here is that that confidence is the only reason I made it this far um I I knew I knew from kind of an early spot when I started thinking about playing FPO even even at all way back in the day uh that I was potentially going to be good enough to win tour stops. Um, I wasn't quite good enough back then, but you know, I've, I've worked at it. Um, uh, it, being that ambassador is, is strange though. Um, it, it makes my job kind of harder because when I'm on that lead card or I'm, I'm in that pressure situation and I, you know, look at my shirt or I see someone in the crowd wearing one, um, it, it kind of shakes my head out of what I need to be focusing on, on the course which is the shot I'm about to throw. Um, but like, that's, that's just how things are gonna go for, you know, me. I, I am currently the highest rated trans, openly trans woman in the game. So, so far. So far. <laughs> so far. Hold on. <laughs> but um, because of that, I'm, I'm the one that's kind of in the spotlight. You know, that's just, I, I kind of knew that's how it was gonna go. Um, so some of the positive encounters I've had, uh, on, on tour, mainly the biggest one is probably at, at the OTB open this year that I got second place in and kind of made a charge for the win at. Um, but when I was coming down the stretch on 18 and knowing I'd lost the, the tournament at that point and taken second place, um, the crowd actually kind of started chanting my name a bit. And it was such a heartfelt moment that it, it actually kind of like made me cry a bit. Yeah, and I didn't expect it to happen, which is nice. It's nice to have those moments that like you don't expect to happen, and then you're surprised. So for sure, I have an update, everybody. Natalie went and did it. She won an Elite Series Disc Golf Pro Tour event. She won the Discraft Great Lakes Open this past weekend. She is now part of a tour that has a trans woman who has won a major event. And I am so proud of her and I am so thankful to know her as a friend. Keep doing what you're doing, Natalie, and Chloe and Kylie, you keep on doing what you're doing as well. That's it. When I'm here this weekend, two things are gonna be, you were talking about, yeah, it can be a challenge to be an advocate, and it can be. The two things I want to be this weekend is, I want to be the best woman that can throw a thumber in this entire tournament. And I also want to laugh far more than I hit trees. That's my two things. Kylie, what are you looking forward to? And what are some of your expectations or hopes for yourself for this weekend? Uh, I'm looking forward to just meeting new people. Um, I always love meeting new people and um, I'm very social. Um, 
but my expectations are that my forehand throws really well, stays online, um, no unintended rollers. Um, yeah, I'm very, I put a lot of expectations on myself, so I had to remember also have fun at this as well. Um, and just, you know, I'm also representing people too, so um, just go out there and just try and uh, maybe get a good backhand throw because I can't throw them, so we'll see what I can do. I think that that's, you, you brought up a good thing, not, we we are ambassadors, and try not to kill ourselves with trying too hard on our expectations. Natalie, what are some of your goals and hopes and expectations for this weekend? Uh, well, first off, you mentioned wanting to win. That's that's what I want to do. <laughs> um, other than that, I'm I just I just don't want to get in my head too much. I've I've been struggling with my my mental side of things for a bit lately, and if I can kind of clean that up, then I'll be able to make a run at it for sure. Um, my form kind of needs a little bit of work too, so if I'm gonna get little bit more sh more field work in today to try and clean up some some small errors that I've been having lately and if I can do that then it should be easy to do. Great. And Chloe. Well, as Natalie mentioned, <laughs> as much as I would love to win, which is one of my expectations, not really. No, I, I I would love to win for sure, but it's it's not an expectation. Uh, I set out on this this year of touring to have fun, make friends uh, as a priority over like playing well and, 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 you know, even winning. And so um, I really just want to expect to keep a cool head and just play my game, go out, have fun with my cards, make sure the vibes are, are solid and just, you know, have a good game. Whenever I, I started playing and, and started getting good and going to tournaments and stuff like that, um, I looked into like, uh, getting some like sponsors and partners and stuff and I always thought it would be so hard because like I am super controversial and like as a company standpoint um I don't know how they feel about supporting trans women because then some people would be like oh well I don't want to support this company and spend money in this company anymore because they support trans women and and so I always thought it was going to be super hard to like uh, get sponsors and, and people to kind of like be on my back and help me out. And then I found uh, Upper Park and they've been amazing. Like super, some of their, um, their core values are to be a good human and create legendary conversations and relationships. And I feel like that's like all that I'm about. So whenever um, I talked to them and, and we had a meeting and reached out, like it was almost perfect. And so then they put me on the team and, and they've, they've given me the opportunity to make funny videos for them and stuff. And they've really just like, I really appreciate any company like or, or that supports, and I know Natalie uh, is sponsored by um, Neptune, and they've made a huge stance about being super like accepting, and and uh, they've got like uh, their picture is like a Pride Month uh, flag, and um, I really appreciate any companies that that like want to support us and and just be there for us, and I think that's super awesome, and it's it's showing other companies and and the community that like this is okay and. And that's that's sweet. So. I want to give a huge shout out to Kylie, Natalie, and Chloe. A huge thank for being here. Make sure you follow these people right here on their social media accounts and everything. And they will be naming those off to you in right now. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm sure all of us like just be able to talk and everything. Just uh, get our opinions out there and um, get the representation going. Um, so thank you. Um, I'd like to thank my sponsor, uh, Wicked Aces Disc Golf, um, my one sponsor, so if there's any more. Um, uh, but if you want to find me on social media, uh, XXKylieMay on Instagram, Twitter, uh, my YouTube channel. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. I also want to thank you for allowing me, <laughs> me to be on here. Uh, it is an absolute pleasure. Um, I just I need to thank my my sponsors Neptune Discs, uh, BII Apparel Company, and uh, you know I I wouldn't be here without them. So if you want to give them a follow, that'd be fantastic. And then if you're you know while you're there, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Natalie Ryan one one four five six zero. 
I also would like to thank you <laughs> for inviting all of us over and, and uh, having this wonderful interview that we are partaking in. Uh, I also would like to thank some of my sponsors for help supporting me, uh, Upper Park Discs. Um, and if you would like to uh, get anything from there, you can use my code Chloe10 and you get 10% off. It also directly helps me. I'm also sponsored by uh, T-Box Socks. They have these really awesome Pride Month socks. Uh, if you would like to go pick up some of those, as well as some of my own custom socks, and they directly support me as well, as well as Well Sacks and OTB Discs. They also sponsor me um, as well. And if you would like to follow me, I'm usually on Instagram, uh, Chloe underscore Alice underscore underscore. And uh, yeah, keep up with all of us and it'd be super fun. Okay, folks, that's it right there. Make sure you get out and throw discs and also make sure that you get out there and laugh and have fun and be kind. Those things will make you a better person. That's it. Bye. Thank you.